Sekarang rasanya sangat panas. Kami seperti nggak bertahan lagi untuk hidup di daerah yang semakin panas ini. Makanan di rumah hanya cukupnya dua hari begitu lah. Tapi apa sih nanti ini kalau habis? These are the stories of people living on the front lines of climate change. The risks and threats of climate change are real. This is not just some kind of projection. This is happening right now. Communities across Asia are constantly fighting a daily battle. Intense heat waves are killing thousands. Prolonged droughts are destroying livelihoods. Nắng khoảng một tháng nữa chắc giường nhà mình chắc còn chừng 15 20 cây là giữ chứ không nữa. Mega cities have run out of water. Yeah, I've just been told about while people's homes sink into the sea. This is 24 hours in the lives of those worst affected. Their resilience in the face of crisis. Sebenarnya, masyarakat itu kalau diberi solusi untuk soal yang dialami, dia bisa melakukan lebih daripada apa yang kita pikirkan. This is the longest day. Tapi tanya mas, yo mau nani anu mas, ono banyu to mas, mau nani ke yo? Lihat sandang kamu nih binang, yo kelabu putih be katok biru. Ono mbak eh anu nih ke sitik 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 ono mas, kok terus bentahun kok sitik 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 kok tabah tabah terus sih mas. Terusan kiki sprint nih kiki mas, ra tabah tabah terus orang ono kendiate tabah. Ya tadi, ya segawe anu palit top. Pasija and her family have lived on Indonesia's most populated island, Java, for over 20 years. They are in one of the worst hit villages on the country's 80,000 kilometer long coastline. Rising sea levels and land subsidence have forced 500 families to relocate inland in search of higher ground. Only three families remain. <laughs> Wingi tak dia abah wingi. Mau nani, mau nani tak dia. Ki tak bater ngan tak sak mini. Bayu ni rope je sak mini. Iki. Terus tahun dua ribu siji mulai rope sitik sitik sitik. Katai mapa awet dua ribu cita mas, kiki katai mapa dua ribu piro, rong puluh lah mas, semangkin tabah terus tu. Nah esok ngater ke anak sekolah, ngunukui pelahan, ngunukui gujur gujur, ngono anu teles kabeh, ngunukui mas. Rekosoni ngunukui mau paling rekosoi. Twenty years ago. The village of Bedono sat over five kilometers from the shoreline, 
and the family's home was surrounded by agricultural land and neighbors. Now it is being swallowed by the sea. In what was once a prosperous and fertile agrarian region, a landmass equivalent to over a thousand Indonesian farms has disappeared. Dari kelas 1 sampai kelas 3, dulu saya berangkat sekolah jalan kaki sampai kelas saya kelas 3 sampai hampir mau lulus itu saya diantar sama mak naik perahu. Karena jalannya udah rusak dan putus. Sudah tenggelam. On a windy day, it can take besieger up to one and a half hours to row to the nearest village. Nah, angin gede mas, terus terus nekat mas, terus nekat terpaksa mas, terus diterak terus. Wong mikir anak sekolah selak kawanan, di pasar selak kawanan. Gue naik semuanya kawanan, ramenangi menangi bakul. Anakku ramenangi menangi motori trayek kawanan, kapiran. Mas Rano Kaiki, ketara ombak kapir. Mas Saikir kosong mas ngelini. Whilst this family must face their struggles alone, entire villages across Asia are finding themselves stranded. In the Bay of Bengal, very warm oceans and a silty landscape mean sea levels are rising almost three times faster than the global average. Four inhabited islands have disappeared in the past two decades, and entire villages have been cut off from the mainland. The Sundarbans is the largest mangrove forest on Earth and sits at the confluence of three rivers, the Ganges, the Meghna, and the Brahmaputra. This is one of the four boats that provides crucial medical care to the four and a half million people living in these isolated islands. The boats have never been in such high demand. Waterborne diseases are thriving in the stagnant waters, and the rising tides have blocked off access to hospitals on the mainland. The boat must depart at 8 a.m. sharp in order to reach the remote village of Gaboria in time. It hasn't been visited in over a week, and hundreds of people are awaiting the boat's arrival today. It will take one and a half hours to go there. Good morning. Good morning. With a team of doctors, Mohammed Wahab has worked across the vast network of waterways for over 23 years. We are sending our doctors and staffs with medicines to the doorsteps of the poor people. If people do not get facility, they cannot survive. The intervention of my organization, it is a very, very big step we have taken. Galvanized by his own childhood poverty, Wahab decided to help the people the government couldn't. With volunteer doctors, he founded the clinic at a tea stall outside Calcutta in 1980. Yeah, welcome. His charity now employs over 120 people and receives government funding to access some of the most remote places in India. We try our level best to help the people in Shubhavans. Every day, there are 3,000 patients. They enroll their name in different clinics. Because of rising sea levels, the village of Gaboria is expected to be underwater in the next few years. But more pressingly, the meteorological department has announced storms are on the horizon. This is the time of typhoon, a storm. Any time cloud can come, a storm can come, you know, water will get into the island. This is a problem. As the doctors disembark, 
people are already rushing to reinforce vulnerable homemade mud embankments. A local storm warning, in effect for 48 hours, urges people to prepare for the worst. This could be one of the boat clinic's last visits to Gaboria in a long time. Sea levels are not just rising in terms of their level, but also they're making extreme events such as rough climate events, high waves becoming more frequent in the future. Scientists have proven that warmer oceans have been influencing coastal wind patterns, which makes waves stronger and more dangerous. Cuaca di laut. Sangat buruk. Mau nelayan, takut ada gelombang besar. Today, like every day, Besiege's eldest son, Ishwan, faces a dilemma. He must confront his fears and go out to sea, or fail to provide food for his family. Biasanya pagi-pagi kayak gini, saya berangkat ke laut nyari ikan. Berhubung cuacanya ini buruk, ombaknya besar, Cari ikan di laut juga susah. Saya dan bapak saya biasanya kalau cari di laut susah, cari ikan di sekitar rumah sini aja. Like more than 11 million Indonesians, the ocean is the 31-year-old's main source of income. Dari tahun ke tahun semakin berkurang. Harus uh, agak maju ke ke tengah ke tengah jadi kan ikan ikan pada minggir uh, ke tengah situ waktu itu saya pernah sih teroma karena cuaca buruk uh, badainya besar ada angin puting beliung Perahunya terbalik dan kita pun uh, kami masih teroma kami sa- terus nggak nelayan mau makan apa Every morning, Pasija takes the fish her son Ishwan has caught from the day before and tries to sell it for a fair price at the local market. Sani cukup tu mas, ada lima kilo-kilo, jadi lima kilo, enam kilo, mas di sana cukup di Sopura. Besija often has to ask the teachers for an extension on school fees when she is unsuccessful in the market. The majority of Badono's local population rely on this market to sell their fish, and there is a lot of competition. Most sellers finish the day with under 15 US dollars in their pockets. Saya berdagang ikan udah 
kurang lebih 22 tahun. Istikoma used to be a large scale fish trader. But when fish stocks started depleting, she had to downscale her business and move to Sayang Market. Nelayan-nelayan lokal di sini makin sedikit. Kalau dulu banyak banget, sekarang do beralih kerja di pabrik. Ada yang kerja itu bangunan itu. Ikan cari ikan mudah dulu. Sekarang cari ikan di sana susah. Lah makane ikane kan berkurang. Kalau dulu cuma lokal-lokal sini layan-layan lokal, lokal sini aja. Kayak ini tuh Mas, ini contoh ikan laut. Sekarang makin susah. In the next 20 years, fish catch is expected to decline by up to a third in Indonesia. Scientists have observed that marine organisms, both in the surface and deep oceans, are migrating forward. And this could be because of oceanic conditions, so temperature, uh, as well as um, things like ocean upwelling. So we are expecting and should expect that our fishery sector will be affected by climate change and people who rely uh, on these sectors uh, in both of, for their employment and also their food supply uh, will have to adapt to this trend. Aku kimu mas satu lima itu bebut terong kilo setengah itu duit terong satu sepitung puluh papat. Nah kurang disangu sekolah ya cukup terong dino mas. Nara nara disangu sekolah ya rasa cukup. Itu eh be orangnya kayak orangnya mas. Mungkin nak aku seminggu kadang itu seminggu kadang lain tu. Orang itu ya yes, we mau mas, pok mau naik naik tu agak tu mas. Ya tak ingat ke titik keman si sok naik mana mas. Mungkin we mau. Pok mau yang kau kau muda mas, dok sak mungkin kau tu mas. Kau tak kebelojo si te, kau turah ni tak ingat ke mana mas. Days like these are becoming more frequent for Pasija and her family are often left with empty stomachs. But for others living in flooded lands, the stakes are even higher. Life-threatening waterborne diseases are rife. In Gabaria village, Mohamed Wahab's mobile clinic is just opening its doors to patients. In order to return safely before dusk, the doctors only have three hours to treat over a hundred patients on the island. With a potential storm on the way, catching the brief time window in which the clinic stops on the island is crucial. Missing it means waiting for what could be weeks for urgent medical care. The patients usually come from very, very long distance. You can imagine from Jayanago to Namkhana, it is about Ten, more than 10 kilometers. In three hours, 100 patients. Two minutes per patient. The people of Sundarban, they are sleeping each night three and a half foot under water because of the, of the sea level is higher now. If there are 100 patients, more than 50% patients are suffering with skin diseases. 50% stomach, fever, and diarrhea. Diarrhea is often. 
As well as rampant disease, flooded farmlands have caused widespread malnutrition. Over half of children are stunted as a result of inadequate diets. Pregnant mothers are also particularly vulnerable, three quarters of them suffering from anemia. Due to drinking water insufficiency, they are suffering from vitamin deficiency. They are suffering from iron deficiency. Minisha is pregnant and regularly attends the clinic, worried that her baby might not be getting enough nutrients. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm Prenatal care in the Sundarbans is scarce, and the majority of mothers deliver their babies at home. We don't want to see the death face of a mother or the child. So we are keeping continuation of the services. We do not think what will be tomorrow. We believe in today, because tomorrow is too late. Whilst rising sea levels are cutting off people's access to basic medical care, they will soon pose a threat to the very existence of the Sundarbans. By 2100, the region is expected to be almost completely below sea level. In the village of Badano, this has already happened. Sejak lahir kecil sudah tinggal di sini. Air laut. Dulu saya kecil. Dulu di kampung. Kami bisa buat kami main sepak bola, buat kami main layang-layang, kami buat apa tuh, main sepeda. Nah, suasana uh, sudah berubah. Garap sama mas, yo tadur, yo nadur jagung, yo nadur pogung, yo lobo, yo pari, yo enggak be garap tambah itu mas lontra, sing sing saya kok anu, sing saya kono tambah eh, sing saya kene cisawa. Sekarang sudah enggak bisa lagi dan penghuninya. Cuma masih satu orang, yaitu keluarga saya yang masih bertahan. Bos Rano, Mas, tahun pokok RC itu Mas paling keri Yunarti iki ngarbu iki Mas 2010. Kita mah ngarbu gitu Mas. Tak anu, tak eleng-eleng. Yunarti iki ngoncone aku mah tak 2010 iki terus wonge ngales sisa. In 2006 the government gave the villagers of Badono some land to allow them to relocate away from the coast. But Besija and her husband couldn't afford to rebuild a house elsewhere.
Kudura Mundal is on his way home. He's been working since 5 a.m. He and his wife moved to Kolkata 15 years ago after water flooded their village on Sagar Island in the Sundarbans. Back in the mid-1990s, environmentalists called the people leaving the Sundarbans some of the world's first climate refugees. They have had to adapt to life in Kolkata, taking on jobs as a rickshaw driver and a housemaid. Together, they make four US dollars a day, enough to pay rent on a room big enough for a single bed. The Mondals used to own over three and a half square kilometers of land on Sagar Island. For the past 20 years, flooding has prevented them from farming it. The breaking of a dam upstream forced the Mundals into government shelters and then finally to Kolkata. Parts of Sagar Island now lie three meters underwater. Their eldest son still lives in the Sundarbans with his wife and children, but with no job to support them. Though small and cramped, the Mandals were lucky to find a home in Kolkata. Over a third of Calcutta's 14 million strong population live in slums, with poor sanitation and security. Much of this rapidly increasing slum population is made up of migrants who have left the Sundermans in search of jobs and safety from natural disasters. Whilst millions across Asia's coasts will soon have to leave their homes, some still find seeds of hope in their flooded lands. <laughs> Ali Mahmood is a mangrove plantation coordinator. He works for an NGO that strives to protect the local environment from coastal erosion. Untuk sekarang program penanam mangrove yang kita tanam ini sudah satu juta lima ratus ribu pohon. Ini untuk pohon mangrove ini tanaman tahun 2008. Untuk jenisnya Risopora mucronata. Karena mangrove penting ya, memang penting sekali. The mangrove can be very useful and also very feasible, cheap 
solutions for local small community as a solution for sea level rise. They're essentially trees, but they have very complex root system. They trap sediments and keep up with the levels of sea level rise. It bukan hanya sebatas untuk sedimentasi ya, untuk fungsi ekonomi, jadi untuk fungsi yang lainnya banyak sekali jadi yang utama bagus itu kemungkinan ikan atau udang kepiting itu juga juga semakin hari semakin bagus. Karena dalam slogan kami satu pohon yang kami tanam akan memberi manfaat bagi beberapa orang sekitar. Seperti itu. Ali is on his way to pick up Pasija and Ishwan who have worked with him for 15 years. Alhamdulillah Mas, sampai Ali's organization pays Pasija six US dollars for every 100 seeds she collects. suruh menanam dari mulai beliau membibitkan, beliau membuat acir, beliau menanam itu kami serahkan 100% ke pasca. Jadi 500.000 pohon yang sudah ditanam beliau dengan kami. Local scale solutions can be very effective in many parts of Indonesia where uh, big infrastructures uh, may not be so visible. I do see patches of hopes when I travel within Indonesia. Really the power of local awareness. If people have incentive to protect their environment for whatever reasons, could be from ecology, but mostly for economic reasons, those are the pockets of protected environments. Lagi pemerano mangkrup itu mas, lah yo tetap rono tu mas, neng gorawi, neng sodor, mas mangani umai wong kono, ombei. Yo aku bangga mas, wong seng kelindungi di sok ini, seng tukang nanduri, karo bocah bocah. Di sini aku yo rodo rejo rodo mewa mas. Kalau proses menanam mangkrup itu memang besar sekali mas risiko yang pertama adalah Jadi menemukan sepinggang, masuk air laut, kemudian berat sekali. Whilst the process of planting is grueling, once completed, the mangroves are extraordinarily resistant. The goal is to form a green belt of protection along the coast of Bodono. Harapan kami, kami menanaman hari ini, lima tahun, sepuluh tahun yang akan datang, tanaman yang kami tanah tetap akan tumbuh. Kalau saya tetap optimis untuk selalu menjaga, melindungi, merawat dan menanam mangrove yang ada di Desa Bedono. Kemudian umumnya itu di Kabupaten Demak. Kami optimis. Mungkin desa-desa yang lain ini untuk Timbul Soko, di Kecamatan Bedono juga sudah banyak itu kalau di sana tanamnya sudah besar jadi untuk tingkat abrasinya mungkin kecil. Ali strongly believes that villagers can take the problem of rising sea levels into their own hands. Itu kemungkinan kalau memang tidak ada penanganannya dari penanganan dari pemerintah, itu kemungkinan abrasi ini juga akan merambah ke sabuk pantai ini atau pemecah gelombang ini memang besar anggarannya. Kalau kami hanya sebagai jembatan untuk memotivasi masyarakat, pada dasarnya kita sebagai manusia ya mas ya. Jadi manusia itu adalah halifah untuk menjaga lingkungan, menjaga alam. Mungkin memang ini kembali lagi ke kita semua. Jadi berbalik ke kita. Nah, 
Ya aku kok nak pindah atau mas sopo sing kerja mas. Bentau nih kon kui nandur pembibitan rumah kerup kui. Yo neng kene mas. Mati urip ya seneng kene. Kerja nane neng kene mas. Whilst almost all the residents moved out of Bodono 10 years ago, Basija and her family of five still struggle to survive in the flooded village in Damak, Java. With sea level rise and land subsidence accelerating rapidly, the family could be fighting a losing battle. Sekarang jam setengah enam, air mulai masuk ke rumah. Air biasanya naik sampai setengah satu meter. Setiap malam saya ngerasa sangat kedinginan karena di bawah tempat tidur saya ini ada airnya. Kodria is Pesija's only daughter. She is 17 years old and will graduate from high school next year. Ini agenda kegiatan saya dan ini jadwal mata pelajaran saya di sekolah. She's part of a whole generation of young people who will decide whether to remain in the region or seek better opportunities elsewhere. Ya sekarang enggak emang enggak ada teman, tapi kan ya karena tenang. Dan di sini ada beberapa buku pelajaran dan beberapa koleksi novel saya. Saya suka baca novel karena isi-isinya novel banyak yang berkaitan dengan kehidupan sehari-hari. Salah satu novel yang saya suka adalah karyanya Terelie yang berjudul Dia adalah kakakku menceritakan tentang seorang kakak yang memiliki keterbelakangan khusus yang berusaha untuk menjadi adik-adiknya dan berusaha untuk menjalani kehidupannya. Kodria has hopes to leave her home and complete her education in the capital city Jakarta. Kedepannya setelah lulus SMA, saya beringinan kuliah jurusan sastra bahasa Indonesia karena saya ingin jadi seorang penulis. Setelah lulus kuliah, nanti bekerja. Setelah itu bisa beliin rumah juga untuk orang tua. Ya, karena sudah terlalu lama di desa ini dan menyendiri. When young people leave their villages to educate themselves, they often don't return. By 2030, 60% of the world's population will live in cities. In rural areas, the elderly and the very young will be left fending for themselves. Luckily, the storm hasn't hit today, and Mohammed Wahab's team is able to make it back to the port before dusk. The team is exhausted. They have worked tirelessly for little reward. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. We have only four or five boats. To cover Sundarbon, it needs more boats. But it is very costly. Very costly. A lack of medical staff in the region has left Wahab fighting overwhelming odds. The small government funding just isn't enough. In some districts in the Sundarbans, there is just one doctor for every 100,000 people. Nobody is willing to come here. There are many super specialty hospitals made by government, but there is no doctor. They never like to come in the forest. I'm sad when educated people living in Sundarbans and living in other places. We are doing our best, but it is not adequate. We need support. We need support. In Pasija's family home, 
Conversations about staying or leaving happen almost every night. Just days after our crew filmed in the Sundarbans and Kolkata, unusually warm sea surface temperatures caused one of the most devastating and deadly cyclones in West Bengal's history. The house in which the Mondal son lived with his family was hit, and whilst the family was unhurt, the roof of their home collapsed. In my entire life, I have spent in Shandarbha. I have not seen so much devastation and destruction of gigantic proportion. Our poor mobile boat dispensary was not been able to function due to the damage they sustained in Cyclone Ampham. Most of our mud house of poor people were washed away. Disaster comes and goes, but there is some disaster which gets imprinted in your mind forever. 